Welcome back to DK Sports Radio. This is Chris Carter, NFL analyst, and you're listening to The Carter Six Pack. Yes, it's the Carter Six Pack where we talk about a specific topic and the top six things of that topic. Um, sometimes we rank them, sometimes we don't. Some, this day we will because we're going to rank the top six safeties the Steelers should be considering in the upcoming NFL draft. We already did the top six inside linebackers. We're doing the top two positions of need that everyone's been talking about. We've been covering a lot of these athletes through Carter's Classroom with in-depth film to st- film study. Dale Lawley's also been listing his his guys all around the board. I have my own, and I've been, I've been developing this list for quite some time, going up and down about the guys I've been studying. But I've come to these six guys that I think the Steelers are going to be looking at and we'll talk about where they should get them it should, you should note that I am excluding Minka Fitzpatrick the Alabama safety slash cornerback as well as Derwin James the Florida State so Florida State safety because those guys are definitely going in the top 15 of this draft there's no way that the Steelers can reach up and get those guys unless they make a humongous trade and we just know that's not their style they rather they make moves within themselves they don't reach outside the outside of themselves to to find things and give away pieces that they know are valuable so with that without any further ado let's get to number six number six six Number six, I'm actually going to go with Marcus Allen from Penn State. I know some people are are, are, are thinking, well, wait a second, what's up with that? But Marcus Allen is a, is a bigger style, style of safety. They're ta- the Steelers have already talked about moving Sean Davis to free safety. What they need is more guys in the bo- – if they're going to push the Davis back there, they would need another guy in the box that can play physical. That's what Marcus Allen does. He plays the ball decently enough. He's not going to be a free-ranging safety, and he has the size. He's six foot two, two hundred. Pounds. The guy is is just kind of right for that for that kind of a position. I put him over the, uh, Deshaun Elliott because I think Elliott wouldn't be as well in the physical aspect. He did lead the I think the nation the nation's safeties with interceptions this past season. I just think that he's going to get lost a little bit more. And with Marcus Allen, you can put him up, line him up with uh, with tight ends, let him attack inside the box, and he'll and he'll find his home. But that's why I have him listed there. Um, still, uh, the few other guys above him, and we'll get to those guys right here. Number five. Number five is Terrell Edmonds out of Virginia Tech. Now, some people may are going to disagree with me on this one. I I see Terrell Edmonds as a guy that can become a very good safety. He's listed around around. He I've seen several listings at the combine. I saw listings of six one. I've seen six foot. I've seen six two. But this guy essentially he's Tremaine Edmonds, the superstar inside linebacker that the Steelers will never have a chance to get. Uh, Because he'll go too high. He's his older brother, and he's a safety. He ran like a 4.46 in in the 40-yard dash. He had the highest vertical jump, the highest broad jump of anyone in this draft class uh, when it comes to safeties. Uh, And he was uh, he was a he was a really decent guy that when he was able to figure out what his assignment was and he could stay in his comfort zone, he could burst all over the field. And that's what the Steelers could use is a faster guy that can make those moves in open space. Um, I've seen this guy, there would be a receiver a good five yards behind uh, beyond him and he would be able to turn, run, and find the receiver, sometimes even get the interception. Um, the reason I wouldn't have him higher is because he's not consistent enough. He does get lost a little bit when the ball's in the air. He doesn't play the ball the best of, of the safeties out there. I just think that his athletic talent makes him a, de- a decent prospect. A lot of people are having like a fourth to fifth round grade on the guy. I, I put him around, around, around there. I think that some teams might jump to, on, jump on him, uh, depending on how safeties fly off the board in this draft. Um, but his athleticism, I think, is, is gonna is gonna put him on the market for some teams. You could see him go as early as the third round. Um, this, if the Steelers are sitting around in the third round and they still haven't picked their their, their safety yet, Thrill Edmonds might be that guy. But there's a few other guys they could consider that could be hanging around. Number four. four. Number four, we're going to West Virginia. Because you're white, six foot two, 216. This guy is is, is a really decent safety. He had, he, I think he had four passes defensed, a couple interceptions in 2017. Uh, he had a good command of the field, and you're going to need someone like that in, in your defense. What's really interesting, when they with the addition of Morgan Burnett and Sean Davis, you got, you got a bunch of guys that can play in the box safeties, and you need guys that are going to be center fielders. White's kind of a tweener. He can play in the box. He can play center field a little bit, but you, but you, you kind of, if you have three guys that can do that, you can rotate them or you can, can confuse quarterbacks by saying, okay, who's the, who's the free safety? Who's the strong safety? And who's the extra, you know, the nickelback safety that's on the field playing in the box. Um, 
I think that uh, that White kind of fits into that mold a little bit. And again, he's a guy that I expect around the late second, late third. Um, you know, he's he could be hanging around there. And if the Steelers don't have their guy, he's someone to keep on their radar. Um, I have him listed at four. I just think his his athletic talents. Um, he's not as fast as Edmonds. Uh, but I think he has a better sense of himself when he when the ball's in the air and, and how to control his body and a better natural reaction to the game. Edmund's gonna take is gonna take some development as far as his instincts and how he reacts to, to seeing things. Um Kazir White, I think that's gonna come a little bit more naturally to him. But um all that being said, I still don't have him as one of the guys that the Steelers should be looking at if they really want to improve at the safety position in this draft. Number three. three. Number three is a pure center fielder, and that's Jesse Bates out of Wake Forest. Jesse Bates is, uh, I've, pre- I've previewed him uh, thoroughly here on Carter's Classroom on DKPittsburghSports.com. Go check it out. We have 99 cent subscriptions. If, you, if you're if you hearing this and you're not subscribed and you're on our podcast network, um, you can go check out all Carter's Classroom. Get yourself ready for the draft. Um, but uh, Jesse Bates is, is that pure center fielder type. He's not He doesn't have a lightning speed, but he knows how to play in the middle of the field. He knows how to bait quarterbacks. He has a great sense of how to fool them into thinking that he's not on, on a certain assignment and then jumps it at the right time. He plays the ball really well. He, get, he goes up and gets it at the high point, um, and he can return a little bit. He did some punt returning uh, for four week first. Uh, Forrest, he uh, he had a I think he had a pick six last year. Um, decent, a really decent player. Now the only thing is he played only two years of, of college football for Wake Forest, so that's the knock on him is that he might not have be as experienced. And when you start going up against uh, you know bigger guys in the NFL and the game's a little bit faster, the question is would he be able to keep up? I think he will. He end up will being able to keep up. Um, and I think he's a decent center fielder. If if uh, if he's still around in the second and you don't and you didn't get your man in the first, that's the guy I would pick up. Um, I just I don't see him as the first rounder that some people do. Um, I, mean, I, I mean I wouldn't blame you if you think that he should go in the first round, but I do think that he's a guy that you can find in in the second round for the caliber that that he is because he doesn't have that elite speed that you want of this the pure center fielder. But as far as talent wise, decent guy to be picking up. Number two. two, two. Number two, Ronnie Harrison out of Alabama. Harrison's a big guy. He's a strong safety. He, he can cover the slot extremely well, plays the ball, played all four years of college football at Alabama. Huge part of that defense. No, he's not making Fitzpatrick, but he played next to him, and this guy definitely is a, is a big-time hitter. Uh, Justin Reed, he's listed at six foot two oh seven. The guy is, is, a, is a freak when it comes to how he's able to use his size and compete with slot receivers. He challenges tight ends, and he's not afraid. To, to come and bring the pain. He does have to work on his tackling technique a bit. He leads with his shoulder a lot, which is good in, this, in that sense, but he often leads with his shoulder without wrapping, and that's the issue. So... Um, when it comes to when it comes to uh, Ronnie Harrison, or sorry, he's six foot two, two sixteen. What was I reading? Who? Um, sorry, Ronnie Harrison, two, six foot two, two sixteen. That's the size you want your strong safety. Um, and I'm telling you, he brings the pain, and he can be that guy. He can be the extra linebacker guy that you want because they don't have Ryan Chazier for this season, and uh, I think that that makes him an intriguing prospect because he could be that safety that sort of plays but the tweener linebacker spot. Um, he has the size. He doesn't, you know, he would he would have a problem if he took on like bigger linemen by himself, but he would have the speed to be able to cut under passes. He can he can play man coverage. And I think he would be a good challenge for most tight ends in the NFL. But that's why we have Ronnie Harrison as the second best safety. Expect him to be available. He'll he'll definitely be available in the later part of the first round unless someone really jumps for him. Um, but if if uh, if this the next guy that I'm going over is off the board. Ronnie Harrison would be my guy in the end of the first round. Number one. Number one is my top pure center fielding free safety, and that's Justin Reed out of Stanford. Six foot oh, two oh seven. That's who I was reading by mistake earlier. But uh, Justin Reed is is that guy. Now he didn't just play center field for Stanford. He played in the slot. He played in the box a little bit. But this is a guy that you could line up all over the field. And his four point four flat 40, 40 time. Um, was spectacular. It showed off why I liked him on tape. Because, and again, we've previewed him, Harrison, and Bates all on Carter's classroom. Um, and he, his speed is 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 top notch. He can he can cover one part of the field and flip to the other uh, when the ball's in the air. And that's what you want out of a center fielding free safety. You want him to have the range of speed to be able to, to go from one player to another very quickly. He has very good bursts. He he knows how to play the ball in the air. I've seen him win several jump balls in college. He knows how to contest the ball. 
Um, and he has really good recovery speed. I've seen him get fooled by a, a wheel route, and he'll come back, and then he'll realize he got beat, but then he'll stick with the play, run up, and catch the receiver as the ball is, is in the air. I think the biggest thing that Justin Reed is he's going to have to learn how to how to not get fooled by the quarterback's eyes. I saw that happen to him a, a little too much in college, uh, most notably when they played UCLA and Josh Rosen, who's going to be a first-round pick as, at quarterback this year. Um, but um, – you know, if that's but if that's your biggest knock on a safety, I think that's fine because he's going to to work through those in the NFL. He's gonna he's gonna uh, be working with a few veteran safeties. You know, Sean Davis is gonna be entering his third year, but Morgan Burnett's been around since 2010. Um, there's there's gonna be a, a nice learning curve for this guy to to. To, to take, but I think it's going to be eased by by the people in this secondary. Um, also, um, I think when it comes to, when it comes to ta- to again, athleticism and talent, this is the guy that's going to be available at the end of the first round, and the guy that's going to be able to fl- fly from sideline to sideline. He could end up being an X factor type, and that's what the Steelers really need in their secondary. They have a re- they have two good corners that are develop developing. Uh, one, you know, Artie Burns, he's still developing, but he's really good. I think that he's going to end up being very good for the Steelers. Hayden's already there. He knows what he's doing. He can shut down a side of the field. Um, you got Cam Sutton, who I think is going to become a, a special player for this defense. He can be the, the slot, but you don't need him to be the slot because that's Mike Hilton. He's in the nickel. He's bringing pressure, and they still have Brian Allen, who I think is also going to have a shot. The Steelers really like him. I like his college tape. He just needs to work on his fundamentals, but he has good ball skills. He has good speed and good size. Just need to put it all together and make sure they make make him that complete cornerback that the Steelers are looking for. Um, and uh, but you know the again the secondary I think. That there's a good place to learn there, and if Justin Reed joins this defense, I think that he's gonna have to play. All he'll have to do is just play that center field role and kind of and kind of be the last man not to get beat, um, and that might suit him well because his biggest weakness is coming up and stopping the run and taking on blockers and taking on running backs that are going full steam. And if the Steelers are playing with two safeties up up front and they're all and they're and they're taking care of that, Justin Reed's gonna be the last guy that's gonna have to get there. Uh, but with his speed, I think that'll at least put it, be able to get him in position to make plays and accelerate quickly enough to to make stops that a free safety you would ex- you would expect to. But I think the days of the enforcer free safety for the Steelers are coming to an end just because this, that style of playing the NFL is starting to wane, which is what we saw with Mike Mitchell, who was supposed to kind of be another Ryan Clark. Um, but just the, the 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 rules that have constantly changed have made it tougher for those players to make their hay in the NFL. But that's it. Those are my those are my top six. Um, I you know if you if, if you're if you're wondering about the tape on these guys again, look up Carter's classroom here on DKPittsburghSports.com. We also have dueling mock drafts between myself and Dale Lolly, our NFL beat writer. He's uh, he's this is his I believe his third mock draft. I did my first because I've been in the I've just been in the film cave just cranking out film for weeks as Chris Benson's been helping me a lot um but uh but yeah check it all out we got we're getting you ready for the draft right now it starts on April 26th um the that's a Thursday the the Steelers have the 28th pick um there's some talk there that there's some teams that want to trade I don't expect there, there to be a trade that's just not the Steelers way but all that being said, anything can happen in the NFL draft. It's going to be exciting. There's going to be a new guy to talk about, and we'll be talking about them next week or well, after next week when they do make those selections because they're also going to be adding a few more players. But we'll get into all that later. Thanks for listening to the Carter Six Pack here on DK Sports Radio. Stay tuned. We still have a lot more great content coming at you as the Penguins make their push for the Stanley Cup to three-peat, and the Pirates continue to try to fight and see if they can hold on to that winning record early in the season.